Hello and welcome to Testing the Theory. Today we're looking at splashdowns. Splashdowns are not something often considered in space travel for one main reason. Earth is the only known planet to definitively have liquid oceans on the planet's surface. We don't often bring samples back from other celestial bodies, and when we have, often they come back with humans, a much more precious cargo. In 1967, to protect their delicate human passengers, NASA conducted tests on the Gemini-type craft. These tests would handle water splashdowns at various yaw angles to see how it might fare in rough weather. These tests were conducted at various speeds and met with fairly expected results. In this particular situation, the hydrodynamics and aerodynamics are pretty similar. The study showed that when the base of the capsule hit the water square, it caused the most longitudinal g-force, and when the capsule hit the water side on, the least. We've been seeing some side-by-side -side tests that I would consider equivalent. The Mark 1 command pod shows remarkable differences in g-forces to the capsule. When presenting an aerodynamic profile, the Mark 1 command pod shows the highest g-forces and the lowest with the least aerodynamic, though Stock, KSP and Kerbal Engineer disagree on the readings. This is likely due to the way KSP reads g-forces over time and because of the additions of buoyancy in 1.05. Fortunately, in KSP, there are planets other than Kerbin with liquid oceans. Unfortunately, one is very inhospitable and the other is very far away. Today, we'll be using our game knowledge with the Splashdown version 2. We're going to conduct an interplanetary splashdown without parachutes and without engines. We'll be using buoyancy as a landing mode. This spacecraft will very precisely launch from Kerbin's sphere of influence and is now approaching Lays at the interplanetary transfer speed, which will max out at 8,025 meters per second, or around 18,000 miles an hour. Splashdown pulled over 80 Gs during the atmospheric entry and burned up just over 150 units of the ablator shield. As you can see, once we burn off that enormous excess speed, slowing down becomes relatively easy. The only action I took was to set the SAS to prograde and the staging of the shield detachment. Buoyancy in KSP is calculated by the volume of the ship parts in the water, but relative to the real world capsule, the Mark 1 command pod was far more buoyant. However, drag is still factored in. With a more aerodynamic profile, the greater volume of the craft gets into the water faster. The buoyancy acts more quickly, decelerating the craft faster, causing more g-forces. The strongest parts in KSP can withstand an impact of 80 meters per second. These are mostly large, structural pieces, and while 80 meters per second might not sound a lot, that is still 179 miles per hour. All we have to do is slow the craft from an interplanetary speed to below terminal velocity. Then the buoyancy of the craft should slow it to safe speeds. In the last testing the theory, we looked at how deploying wings as drag petals worked really well at getting craft in thin atmospheres to a speed where it was safe to open their chutes. Lathe's atmosphere is thick enough that you almost don't need any drag to bring in below terminal velocity as long as you don't burn up in the atmosphere, which, as we've seen, is pretty easy. We land at 64.5 meters per second or 144 miles per hour and slow to 8 meters per second before any of the delicate parts touch the water, pulling only 16 Gs in the process. The whole vessel remained intact, and dropping the splashdown apparatus leaves the probe floating freely on the surface, ready to carry out more scientific experiments and testing more theories. There are links to the public domain video and the original NASA report on the Gemini capsule splashdowns in the description, both of which are very interesting. Splashing down or aqua braking isn't a technique I've seen deployed in KSP very often, but I think it has unique uses. I hope you experiment with it a little and come up with some uses I didn't. I hope you enjoyed watching me testing the theory and I'll see you soon for more.